So first of all, uh, welcome everybody. My name is Nancy Alfaro and I just uh, wanna share with you a message that the Lord gave me while we were at the beach. And um, so the message today is called, be still, go deeper and fly higher. Um, so I'm gonna start this message by showing you a video um, of a little bird that was at, in Panama City Beach. And the Lord said, this will be your next class. And it was about two weeks ago. So I'm gonna share it with you. I want you to observe this little bird and what it's doing. So if you see, I call that bird Marta because as soon as seeing this little bird, right, it caught my attention how quickly he was walking. And it's almost like I could have a closed caption going on in my brain because it, he was like, let me go this way. No, no, no. Let me turn around that other way. No, no. Better over here. Better over there. And it looked like it had no direction. It fell many times as my brain works. I'm trying to do too much and I cannot get anything done because I'm running left and right and, and I don't find the direction. And uh, the, the word came that I, it remind me, right? Marta, Marta, when Jesus told Marta, can you slow down for a minute and come sit here by my feet? And I think this is the message for today, right? That it's about, being still, because the next verse that come in was be still and know that I'm God. And I heard the father said, the world does not know how to be still. Remind my children to be still. And um, last night I had a dream and now the, the, the Lord is reminding me about this dream. And in the dream, there was a tornado coming. There was a lot of people upset. There was a, it's probably a representation of how much uh, disturbance is going on in the world today, right? We are hearing about um, tornadoes, hurricanes, uh, people protesting on the streets and, and just craziness all around the world. And um, today when I started writing the message, because as you know, God gives me first an analogy and the analogy was with, you know, it was just a picture this time, which was observing this bird moving back and forth and back and forth. And then he's speaking and saying Psalm 4610 that says, he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among, among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And this is a verse that we have heard a lot, but I think today we need to kind of squeeze it out and really understand what is God trying to tell us in this moment, for today, for right now moment. This is a right now word. And one of the things I started looking up was the statistics about anxiety. Um, and it says that, you know, you, we know anxiety is the opposite of a stillness. And anxiety disorders, do you know, affects 18% of the population worldwide. That means that 970 million people have anxiety disorders. This is one level up now where it's like a mental illness, okay, by having anxiety. Now, 33% of the population feels stress. Uh, and out of those 33%, 73% has a stress to the point that will affect, affect their mental health. So when I started looking at these statistics, I say, wow, God, out of 100 people, 33% feels the stress, feels overwhelmed, feels that they cannot deal with what's going on on their day to day. And within these statistics, these Christians and non-Christians, because the Lord remind me that the world does not know how to be still, but he said, remind my children. So what that means, and that word was so powerful, remind my children, because we can all experience those moments where we feel stressed out, where we feel tired, where we feel worried, where we feel we cannot handle it anymore. 
By the dictionary and anxiety disorder, they're characterized by the persisting worry, fear, and stress that interferes with one's everyday life. And I know that in the word it says that God has given us a life and a life in abundance, right? Our life is not meant to be worried, to be on fear, to be stressed out, but God is reminding us we need to be still. So when I started looking into this Psalm 4610, this is very popular verse and it, it, is a, it gives a comfort, right? Not only for ourselves, but for other people too. And we always think that this means I just need to relax and know who God is. And, uh, but this is also encouraging believers to reflect on, on who God is. And I want you to think that for a minute. I want you to think about what is that situation that has you stress out? And I want you now to think about who God is, put them side by side and told me how big of a problem that is now. If you know who God is, if you put your mind on how mighty, amazing, he's your provider, he's your healer, he is the one that gives you a way, a way where there is no way, he is the one that, um, he is the good shepherd, he is your rock, he is your strength. When I start seeing, saying all of that out loud, out of the sudden I realize my problem is not as big as I thought it was, because you start realizing my God is bigger than that. So one of the things too is that when this verse was written, was in the middle of a word. This, this uh, verse was in a time where they were fighting. And in the midst of all of that, he says, be still. So this means your life can be a complete mess and a disaster. You could have bombs going off in your life, but there's still something that God speaks and say, be still. So this actually the meaning of it, and this is why we need to understand the context of the verse, because it's not just like be quiet, be quiet, be calm, but it's more like a stop fighting. Uh, it, it is more as, as wake up. It's a call for us to say a snap out of it. That's what the true meaning of that word is is a snap out of it when he's saying be still. Now, if we think about the things that we are worried about, I want you to put, put that problem there and hear the voice of God saying, a snap out of it. That changes the way you understand now that verse. Because it's not just being still and doing nothing about it. Being still does not mean doing nothing. Being still means that you are going to do something to pay attention, that is snap out of it, wake up, is to say, change the direction of what you're seeing. That's what, it, what he's saying. It's like, I want you to stop thinking what you're thinking, snap out of it, wake up, and know that I am God. Wow, that's so much comfort when you see it that way. Um, because it means I need to wake up. My emotions need to wake up. My, my, my whole being, my spirit, my mind, everything needs to align. And you need to speak to your mind and say, wake up. A snap out of it. Stop thinking the wrong thing. A stop taking something that doesn't belong to you. Wake up. That's what it means. So um, now the other thing is, if you notice, right, when I was playing that video, is I want you to see it now under the context of that verse. There is no rest on this verb. And if you see about it, he goes into the water, but it's just shallow water. Every time he gets a little bit wet, he starts drinking from the water and he's like, wait, 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 no, no, I'm not going there. And he gets out. He's not going deep. He's not going, he's just staying out of that water. And you know, when we are with those thoughts of um, being with anxiety, stress out, in our minds and in our heart, we know what we need is to get into the presence. But everything else around us have us so distracted that it's almost, we are like that bird. 
It's like, Lord, help me, but wait, wait, wait. No, no, I need to go here. It reminds me of a story that is in Luke, in Luke 5, and I'm going to read it to you. These were the first disciples. And this have to go, to go with the not only be still, like snap out of it, but the second thing, the second step here that you got to go is go deeper. And I'm going to show you how to go deeper through this verse here. It says, one day Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Great crowds pressed unto him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out what is deeper. And I want you to remember these words, go out what is deeper and lend down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we work hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I will let the nets down again. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boats and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he snapped out of it. He fell to his knees before Jesus and say, oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught as were the others with him. And he say his partners were James and Johns and the, the sum of safety. They were all amazed. So what I'm bringing you this story, these are very popular stories. We know this over and over again, but I want to got a few points here that I want you to realize one thing. Number one, like Jesus needed the boat to use the boats, but Jesus was fully aware what was the need of Simon. He was a fisherman. He was called to be a fisherman. And guess what? He couldn't fish. You were called to do many things and you feel like I'm a failure. I cannot do it. And you are like that bird going all over. I cannot be a good mom. I cannot be a good wife. I cannot, I cannot be, you know, a, 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 an awful at work. I cannot concentrate. I can not, uh, you know, I can preach, but nothing goes through. When you have those moments, see, Simon was in the, in the presence of Jesus, but he didn't know it. And it says, you need to go deeper. And that's what happens. Just like that bird, we go just to the surface. And God is saying today, you need to go deeper. Because when you get deeper, see what happened to him? His eyes were open. And immediately he realized what had happened. He couldn't see because he was frustrated. He was tired. He knew how to fish, but he had no fish. But the minute he connects with Jesus, see, the calling is answer because now he is a fisherman that can have fish and fish so great, not only for him, but for everybody else with it. So what I'm telling you is, so this is why you need to snap out of it. You need to quit it, okay? And then the next thing you got to do is get deeper with the father, because it is in his presence where you are going to, it's going to be revealed to you what truly is going on. And it, he, God is going to give you the tools of how to have your harvest, how to remove the obstacles of that very same thing for Simon was he couldn't fish. And what he gave him back, he gave him fish, but he also gave him the understanding to know because he says, if you say so, watch here, verse five, but if you say so, I will let the nets down again. He heard the word. He heard the Rema word exploded in him and say, wait a minute, this word that I'm hearing, go deeper, is coming from the father.
He received the word, like you gotta receive the word today. So I, I am here to remind you then, you need to be still, meaning snap out of it, right? Be alert, wake up. Number two, you got to go deeper. And the number three is you got to fly higher. As I was preparing for this message, I came through a story that you probably heard on the internet, maybe not. But do you know the only bird that dares to peck on an eagle is the crow? He sits on the back and bites his neck. Now, the eagle does not respond. The eagle actually, the eagle, it says that it won't even fight with the crowd. The eagle, you know, the eagle being so powerful, so big, she doesn't waste any time fighting with this crowd that is on top of her neck. It does not spend any time or energy on the crowd. It just opens its wings and begins to rise higher and higher to the heavens. The higher the flight, the harder it is for the crowd to breathe. And then the crowd just falls due to the lack of oxygen. So learn from the eagle and don't fight the crowds. Just keep ascending. They may be alone for the ride, but they will fall off. The people who are talking behind your back or using you as a subject for their gossips are like the crowds. They love to ride on you to rise higher, but they will never keep up on your level of excellence. So I'm here then to tell you what you gotta do. Get deeper and fly higher. Whatever is coming to bug you, you need to go higher. They won't be able to keep up with you. If you get in the presence of God, if you keep doing what you're doing, get deeper with him, be still. I'm telling you right now that you will see the glory of God through all of this. We just need to be reminded again, this was the word that God has for us to remind you one more time to be still. This is possible for all his children. Remember that was written to you and I for moments of word. So if things are rough, remember, snap out of it and know that God is with you. So I hope you can find this word encouragement to, be, to encourage you today. If you can subscribe to the channel and give me a like, that will help us to stay on, on the YouTube platform. Thank you so much and share this message with others.